Hi, this is Dr. Bernstein with another session of Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes University. This time we're going to talk about upper respiratory infections simply because they will almost always affect blood sugars. For mild diabetics, they may only have a mild effect upon blood sugar. For type 1s like me, a serious respiratory infection could have a very major effect, could triple my blood sugar or even quadruple it. And with children, I see this very often. So we want to do something rapidly and effectively to curb this situation. The very first thing I teach my patients to do is to try a an herbal medi medication that works like magic to stop the symptoms. So whenever uh, a person uh, experiences scratchy throat, runny nose, coughing, I ask them to immediately suck a Sambucol lozenge. Uh, the latest name is Sambucus, S-A-M-B-U-C-U-S. This is an extract of the black elderberry tree. I'm not a naturopath. I'm not big on supplements, but this stuff is like magic. I'm going to show you a bottle. Here's what it looks like. You can see the spelling. You can get it at health food stores around the world. And uh, this stuff initially was uh, tested at Hadassah Hospital where uh, it was uh, tried on controls uh, and uh, people who got the supplement uh, during a flu epide epidemic and apparently the people who uh, took the Sambucol, uh, bulk of them did not get the flu. Uh, I find that it's unbelievable. Now, you must take it within the first three hours of exposure uh, or certainly within the first three hours of symptoms. I tell people to take it before boarding an airplane because there's so many sick people coughing in the closed space on an airplane. Uh, when you go to a theater uh, to see a movie or a show or a concert, uh, take a Sambucol. Uh, it's inexpensive enough and it really works. The next thing to do is to keep track of your blood sugars and deal with them in appropriate uh, measures uh, if they're going up. Now in my book Diabetes Solution we teach you how to use insulin uh, to chase blood sugars. Some people who are not on insulin may find that if their blood sugars are up due to an infection or a cold or something like that, uh, they have to take insulin. So I tell my patients uh, to have a few insulin syringes and a supply of rapid-acting insulin and even long-acting insulin to use when their blood sugars go up. And uh, basically the message is, here is some insulin, here are some syringes. If you get sick, you fax or email your blood sugar data sheets to me and I'll immediately tell you what to do with the insulin. I teach every new patient how to inject, even if they are type 2s who don't require insulin, they might require it if they get sick. Another trick that I use that can be of great value relates to what happens to the person who has waited too long, did not take the Sambucol, and now he has an upper respiratory infection with a lot of congestion, maybe thick, thick mucus, uh, maybe he's coughing a lot and getting up thick mucus, uh, or there's thick mucus in his nose. Uh, one thing you could do is inhale steam. There are these personal uh, saunas that uh, people use uh, to give themselves a facial. I guess women use it for cosmetic reasons. It has a hood, 
uh, a, a clear hood of plastic that you put your head into and uh, st hot steam comes out. You want hot steam, you don't want cold steam. Uh, cold steam can actually uh, transmit infections, pseudomonas infections, I'm sorry, yeah, Pseudomonas aeruginosa infections uh, because bacteria can grow in standing cold water. But if you use hot steam, the heat actually kills viruses and kills bacteria. And the steam uh, loosens things up so that you could clear your airways. Even better, perhaps, than the steam is... Uh, potassium iodide solution. Uh, in the USA, uh, one brand that is commonly marketed is called SSKI, like Sam, Sam, King, Ira. It's uh, a potassium iodide solution that's actually sold uh, to be taken if you're near an atomic reactor explosion <laughs> and uh, you don't want the radiation to uh, attack your thyroid gland. Uh, radioactive iodine might uh, uh, stick to your thyroid gland and here if you've loaded it up with non-radioactive potassium iodide uh, you're less likely to be affected but that's not what we're using it for. We're using it because it thins mucus uh, I used this when I was a kid uh, 80 years ago or 79 years ago um, and it's extremely effective recommended very highly unless you're allergic to iodine uh, the rest of the game is to continue whatever works that is if the Sambucol has worked, you keep taking it every six hours. If, the, uh, if you're chasing blood sugars with injected insulin, you continue it until your blood sugars are no longer going up. Uh, if you're using potassium iodide, you continue them every few hours, might need it only once a day, uh, just to keep the mucus uh, thin. If you're getting a discolored yellow or green exudate in your sputum or in the mucus that's coming out, there's a good chance that you have a bacterial infection or a bacterial overgrowth on a viral infection, in which case it's important to get cultures you want to know what the bacteria is and what antibiotic will uh, destroy it. Now, we see right now in the current season about, I'd say, five to ten cases a week of patients, usually who are out of town and call on the phone, who are sick, and they already went to their local physician. He prescribed an antibiotic. Usually it's a very broad spectrum antibiotic that will kill every organism in their GI tract. And uh, their local doctor did not take a culture. So really all he knows is that because he picked a broad-spectrum antibiotic, it's likely to kill this organism. But he only prescribes it for one week or so. Well, if he prescribed azithromycin, which is the one that they love nowadays, it might last for two or three weeks. But they'll pick whatever they like and stop it after a week. Then the patient gets sick again, but this time the organisms that have uh, sprouted up are the resistant ones, the ones that were resistant to the antibiotic that he started with or she started with. So uh, it's absolutely mandatory that 
the local doctor get a culture of the organism? Well, how do you give them a specimen? Uh, if you're blowing your nose and green stuff is coming out, or if you're coughing up yellow stuff, you spit it into a cup or blow it into a sterile cup. The local laboratory has sterile cups. The doctor's office should have sterile plastic cups. You get the specimen into there, uh, bring it to the local laboratory or to the doctor uh, to immediately uh, process for culture sen sensitivity and gram stain, G-R-A-M stain, Y3 tests. The gram stain will tell you within hours what the bacteria look like. If they're uh, gram positive bacteria, they, re they respond to penicillin-like drugs. If they're gram negative bacteria, they respond to another class of drugs. If it's a mix of bacteria, unusual, that's another story, different kind of antibiotic. Um, then within several days you get actual growth and identification of the bacteria, what's the name of the bacterium, and you get a list of the antibiotics to which they are sensitive. Uh, the doctor is then supposed to take the antibiotic that has the greatest effect upon this particular organism, and it's there on a table that the lab presents him with, and uh, can give you that particular antibiotic. And if you're allergic, to, if you know that you're allergic to a particular antibiotic, there's a choice, and it tells you how potent they are on this organism. Now, uh, we see many people whose illness is prolonged because of the failure to do this. And you can also cause very serious damage if you use a broad-spectrum antibiotic inappropriately. Um, uh, I uh, had a patient who uh, was lived out of town, was treated for a disease he didn't have, for an infection that was non-existent, with a very broad spectrum antibiotic called clindamycin, and he died of the complications of that particular antibiotic. He got an intestinal infection that uh, actually killed him. So, and th this is not unusual for that antibiotic. So, there are all kinds of horror stories that come about because doctors are not culturing the specimen. Now, it's all right to start to make a guess at the antibiotic initially within the three days that you're waiting to get the results of the culture. But then, as soon as you get the results, if you found that you guessed wrong, you switch over to the proper antibiotic. I think I've told you most of the important things to pass on, uh, so don't get sick, remember the Sambu call, and good luck. Uh, look below for instructions on how you can listen to my free monthly uh, teleseminars. Bye-bye. See you next time. The bulk of what you've heard on this video uh, appears in my book, Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes Solution, which is available at uh, most internet and local bookstores. It is published by the Hachette Book Group. I'd like to remind you that we have monthly free teleseminars every month at the site askdrbernstein.net. Doctor is spelt D-R, so askdrbernstein.net for a free monthly teleseminar. Uh, sign up a day or two in advance so that you get a reserved seat. Good luck and thanks for listening.